So hi everyone, I'm Udi, a DevLM Community Manager at Commodore, and welcome to the Chaos and Order webinar where we're gonna break things and then fix them. So uh, before we begin, I'll just introduce our two speakers and breakers and fixers for today. Uh, from Gremlin, we have uh, Julie Gunderson, she's a senior liability advocate. And from Commodore, we have Rona Hirsch, um, a DevOps and a software engineer currently at Commodore. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, showcase Gremlin's chaos engineering platform and then uh, Commodore's uh, Kubernetes troubleshooting platform and then get to the fun part where uh, Julie will inject chaos and break things in front of your very eyes. And then Arona will use Commodore's platform to quickly find the root cause and fix the issue uh, live. And uh, we're gonna begin in a minute. If you have any questions, uh, we're gonna have a short Q and A at the end of this webinar. So drop your questions below and we'll get to them um, at the end of the webinar. So Julie, Arona, Take it away. All right, Rona, I'll pass it over to you. Okay. You Thank you. Walk us through a little <laughs> so, um, hi everyone and welcome. I'm Rona. I'm a software engineer at Commodore, and I'm going to show you a quick overview of our SaaS based Kubernetes native troubleshooting and observability platform that enables both developers and ops teams to independently and efficiently troubleshoot incidents by tracking changes across your entire Kubernetes landscape. So let's talk first about why is it so hard to troubleshoot? So first of all, there are a lot of blind spots, right? I mean, changes are often unaudited or done manually and you can really um, know who did what and when. On top of that, your data is fragmented all over the place, right? I mean, once you have a, an issue, have, you have to go and look at your login solution and your monitoring solution, your CI CD, your repos, your feature flags, and so on. And you have to gather all the data from all of these uh, tools and make sense of it all. And that's not easy. And <laughs> and uh, also, there's always the butterfly effect that um, uh, at the end of the day, one minor change in one service can affect other services dr dramatically, and you can't really pinpoint where it's coming from. So that's the complexity of troubleshooting in Kubernetes today. Um, so. What uh, troubleshooting in Kubernetes looks like today is that whenever you get a, an alert from your favorite, favorite alerting tool like PagerDuty, you have to go through all of these different tools. You probably have a lot more logos in your, uh, in your stack that fit into the slide, but, uh, and you have to spend so much time and resources, to, resources just to answer one simple question, who changed what and when? Uh, so that's where Commodore, Commodore uh, walks in. And Commodore just collects all changes from your, uh, across your system from every tool in your stack and gather it all in one place and makes it very intuitive and easy to understand. and um, and really helps you find the root cause across all your system in a very simple and easy way. Um, so how does it work? Just Commodore collects all your changes across your system and um, presents them in an intuitive and easy to understand timeline, and we, which enables you to draw context uh, contextual insights from uh, and pinpoint the root cause. So uh, we have a very easy pod based agent installation. It takes you just several minutes to, to install it and you get out of the box 
uh, value and you can see all your uh, services and all your stack in just uh, in one simple installation. Okay, so now we can just, uh, Julie, maybe I can just uh, show how it looks like on my end. Absolutely, take it away. Thanks. Okay. So um, here you can see the main services view where we can where we can see an aggregated multi-cluster view of your Kubernetes resources. Um, Oh, here I have only one cluster, but you can use, you can install several clusters and, uh, and uh, it will appear here at, on the left side. Um, um, here you find services such as deployments, stateful sets, uh, and daemon sets. And for each service, you can see its health status and its replica status. Um, you can uh, filter out, use these filters on the left side and navigate through your services um, using these uh, filters. And you can filter by namespace, by cluster, by health status, by kind, and additional filters that you can cust customize on your own uh, just with a simple um, configuration. So let's drill down to a specific service. Well, for example, we take the balance reader. Okay. So this is the service view where you can find all the data needed to troubleshoot and determine the root cause of an incident. Um, here you have three main components. So the first one is the service metadata and here. Um, the second one is the timeline of the events that happen. And the third one is the related services section um, where you can see what really affected the, what can be related to this service and what can affect an issue on this service. Uh, sometimes we don't really know what's connected to what and which service is affecting the other one. But here uh, with Commodore, we can just use the related services and see an aggregated um, 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 an aggregated view of the events that happen on several services such as we see here, we have some, several services and all of these uh, aggregated uh, events that happen on each service. Okay, so from here, I wanna present the events view. Okay. Uh, in the event screen, we can see events across all of our clusters and correlate between timelines. Um, this is useful for um, tracking, uh, catching events that aren't mapped to a specific cluster and often fall between the cracks. So you'll see um, all, of the, all of the events that happened on all of the clusters, on all of the services, just chronologically stack together on top of each other. And you can ma really make sense of it all here. And you can also filter the same with the services uh, view as before, you can filter out the events that happened using the filters here or your own customizable filters. Um, so let's go. over to let's go over to uh, an example of uh, one uh, event that happened. 
So in this event, we can see that there was a health change event. And the reason was that there were not enough ready replicas. There were supposed to be one, but there were only zero. So we got an alert and we got a health event of not, not enough uh, healthy uh, ready replicas. Uh, we can see here when the event started and when it ended. We can also see that the notification were sent on a specific channel that I defined before. We can see the deployment that was related to it. And we can also go over and view the pods and logs status. Okay. So here we have the pods and log, uh, the pods and log screen, and it shows that we have one of one out of one pods that are ready. We can see its state that it's running. We can see how uh, long it is running for, um, the number of containers, and the node that it's running on, and its name, of course. As we can see here, that's the same as if I were running kubectl describe pod and uh, specify the pod name. I can see the describe of the pod, everything that is uh, in the describe uh, command. And I can see the events, I can see that it is running, and I can see also the pod logs here. Okay, so I can see the logs here of this pod. You can see all the st stack trace here and all of the uh, application logs. Uh, so that's a quick overview of Commodore. And Julie, we can go back to you. Excellent, thanks Rona. If I can remember to take myself off of mute. Let me go ahead and take that screen share back. So. Can you see my screen right now? Yes. Well, excellent. So when we talk about chaos engineering, Gremlin is a platform that allows you to practice chaos engineering by safely injecting failures into your system so that you can understand how they're going to behave. And look, failures are everywhere. You can pick a date and search for outage and you're gonna find something. As a matter of fact, if you pick a date as of like, I don't know, last, Tuesday, for example, we would have seen major outages everywhere due to that AWS US East one incident that we had. So failures are inherent to complex systems. And you know, when we talk about complex systems, our systems have completely changed from the monolith to the microservice when we move from on-prem to the cloud. And that brought some great things like the ability to scale. Um, but one of the things, the drawbacks to that is it made our system so much more complex. We needed new ways to build and test uh, our applications. And so when we talk about to chaos, what chaos engineering is, what Gremlin is, we talk about chaos engineering and the fact that reliability is no accident. It's a practiced 
way of making sure that our systems are resilient. And chaos engineering brings that together with thoughtful and planned experiments that reveal weaknesses both in our systems and within our human systems as well. And we want to look at maybe like, where is our tech broken or insufficient? Like, does the user experience break? How's monitoring and alerting working? Does auto scaling work? And for our human systems, you know, let's look at our alert rotation. Where are our alerts wording, working? Were the documentation and playbooks up to date? How did the escalation process work? So with all of that, when we talk about chaos engineering, one of the things that we'd like to talk about here at Gremlin is the fact that you're following the scientific method. So you're observing your system, you're creating a hypothesis. You're saying that if I do this, we think this is going to happen. We think this is going to be the end user experience. And then you're testing that hypothesis. Then you're looking at the data that comes back to you and you're analyzing that and then you repeat and you're making sure to share the results of those experiments out to the rest of the organization. When you practice chaos engineering, there's a few things that you want to do. You want to start small. You want to be careful. You want to start in a, a single service or host, you know, not necessarily the whole application or fleet and in a controlled environment with a ready team and with tools that are going to allow you to see what's going on and to be able to, to troubleshoot that. And that's what we're going to show for you later on. Once you've started small, then you expand that blast radius. You also want to make sure that you can safely schedule or automate your chaos engineering experiments um, and so that you can expand that blast radius out. Now, we're not going to show that to you today because we've got some, some fun attacks that we're planning on, on doing, but you can definitely learn more about scenarios and status checks over at gremlin.com. When we talk about adopting the practice of chaos engineering, you can adopt the practice and development so that engineers are architecting for failure and you get confident testing and development. And then you move to staging. You start small in staging and then expand your blast radius. And then finally you can move into production and you can start small and then you can increase. And if you think about it, it's very similar to how you do development. So you don't need to overthink it. You wanna work iteratively like you do with code, move up the environments like you do with code you already know how to do this. And so I just wanna cover kind of some of the different types of failures that you can run. And we're going to go over some of these today. So there are failures that you can start with such as resource failures um, so that your test can progress as well. So you can start with CPU, disk failures, memory, and IO. I mean, that's what the cloud was built for. Does, does your auto scaling work? Then you can also look at service failures. So we're going to run a few of these today. I'm really excited to, to see what happens, but we, there are process killer attacks or host pod and container shutdowns. You can even run attacks that skew your clock. So the questions you wanna be thinking about are, can your service restart itself without manual intervention? You know, Is traffic automatically routed to the restarted service? You wanna make sure your own stuff is resilient. And then, we can also look at dependency failures. So these are tests like black hole, DNS, latency, and packet loss. So we wanna look at what happens if a dependency is unavailable. What happens when the network is bad? Can your service handle things asynchronously? And then there's also application failures. You, know, you can move up the stack to test the application. You can inject latency into the code. You can throw errors. And so when we talk about chaos engineering, what we want is continuous chaos so that you can have confidence and resilience to a particular failure mode. We want to automate it to prevent drift into failure. And so today, let's go ahead and kick off some attacks and let's see what we will see in Commodore and how we can use that to troubleshoot. Now, I'm going to go over to Gremlin here. Where we've got Commodore loaded. And I think we should go ahead and start off with, what do you say, maybe a black hole attack, Rona? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. That's so <laughs> I, I had to ask you a question right as you were taking a drink. So the black hole, that's going to drop the IP packets at the transport layer. So we're going to, let's say, uh, let's black hole the load generator. So what you're seeing right now is the Gremlin app. Um, and there are many different ways that you can run an attack. So we'll do this a couple of different ways. Right now, Let's just go ahead and see. Let's go to our services. 
Let's see if we see the load generator over here, which we could go that way. Um, we're going to go ahead and select our load generator and we're going to select attack this service. So as you can see, we're attacking the load generator. We've got one replica set, one pod, and we're going to choose our gremlin. And as I mentioned, we're going to run a black hole attack. So we are going to block that traffic. Now you can see here, right here that gremlin is whitelisted that so that it can communicate with the control plane at any time if that connection is lost, it's going to abort the attack because we wanna to revert to safety. So Rona, I say, let's go ahead and run this attack for 120 seconds. Sure. And as we do this, I'm going to unleash our gremlin so that we can see now what happens within our service. And we're using the Bank of Anthos, which is an open source app uh, that you can find over um, at Google Cloud. And I'll grab a link to that to share over it to you. So as we can see, our attack is running. And Rona, did you want to talk about what you think is going to be happening, happening within our, our Bank of Anthos app? Yeah, so I'm thinking that our bank event is app is going to uh we're going to have issue with it, with it and we we're not gonna be able to uh deposit funds or send payments and we're gonna see a lot of uh, critical uh issues in the bank of enters uh, applications and if we can't do this um if we can't send payments and deposit funds in our bank bank account so we don't really have anything right um so i i'm guessing that that's what we're gonna uh see okay did you want to show our users maybe what or folks on here what you're seeing yeah all right let me stop the share and pass it back to you And then there you go. Yeah. One second. Yeah, um, where's my Okay, so as you can see, I just got an alert from Slack, um, alert from Commodore, and it said that I have uh, someone did uh, a deployment so it's very um it's very suspicious because no one is supposed to work now and there shouldn't be any deployments made right now so i'm gonna go ahead and look at it so um there was indeed a deployment made here uh i see that its status is completed and i see that the if i look here i can see the event where when it started and completed it does matches the time of uh, your attack actually and i can see here the kubernetes diff so i can see that the replicas were scaled down from one to zero and also the uh, resources uh, the cpu limits have changed but this is indeed suspicious and if i don't have the the load generator service uh, running right now i will be having an issue with my app and uh, so i should solve it pretty quickly by just scaling up my uh, service back to one instead of zero. So that's what I'm gonna do now.
So I'm scaling up my app. It's still zero from zero, as we can see here. And it changed now to one from one. So I scaled up my, my service, the load generator that Julie attacked. And if we go to our bank service, we'll see, let's check. I can do a deposit and we'll see if I can send payments to someone. And I'm able to send a payment. Yeah, so that's um, solved my issue pretty quickly and it, uh brought that back the low generator service and now my application is healthy again so julie let's go back to you to your next attack excellent okay so now that we've seen kind of what a black hole attack might look like let me pop over and steal the screen share from you can you see my screen yes excellent so I think that we should go ahead and run a memory attack. And let's go ahead and see what happens when we consume memory, let's say from the balance reader and uh, the front end. So I once I've clicked on attacks, I've got my services and my infrastructure over here. I'm gonna go over to Kubernetes. There's a couple of ways that I can do this. I can either type in here or I can go down to my employ deployments. I'm going to select balance reader and front end. So as you can see, these are selected here. We can see what the blast radius, there's two out of 30 targets. I'm gonna choose the gremlin. Memory is a resource attack. So we're going to make sure that our system is resilient under memory. Now, Rona, as I do this, I think I'm going to run this attack for Let's say 120 seconds. You think that works? 180, uh, 300? What do you want? 300, I think. Let's do 300. Okay. And let's get wild and crazy here. So as I mentioned to folks, when you want to start small and expand your blast radius, but we're not necessarily following all of our own rules today, because let's consume 100% of memory in these two services. So I'm going to go ahead and unleash that gremlin. One of the things that you can do while this is pending and getting ready to start, one of the things that you can do is you can actually create a scenario. So let's say you start by consuming 10% of memory, then 15%, 20%. You can actually work your way up at the stack all the way up to this 100% of memory consumption. But because we have a short period of time today, uh, we're just going straight for it. Now, Rona, what do you think is going to happen? So since you attacked the um, balance reader, um, I think that I'm not going to uh, see any balance on my bank account. Well, and why don't we will, go ahead and let you it, show it us? It will be empty. All right. Let's let you show us what it looks like. Okay. And while Rona's pulling up that screen share for anybody that is interested in learning more about different types of attacks, we do have some free Gremlin certifications. So you can go over to gremlin.com forward slash certification. And uh, we have a free practitioner and professional certification, which will teach you a lot more about all of this. And Rona, that attack is running right now. Okay. Great. Okay. 
Let's see if we get something interesting here. And then on the bank of Anthos, are we seeing any issues on that side? Let's see, currently we're not seeing any issues. The balance is okay. I'm wondering if uh, should... I'm expecting to see an empty balance. Maybe we should deposit some funds and see what happens. Maybe. How about like a thousand dollars? Let's just give us some money today. I always have way too much fun depositing money in here. So okay. it does look like the deposit it, was successful. The it is, is successful. Running. And we still haven't got any alert from Commodore. So. Let's try maybe something. Yeah, and the payment is indeed successful. So the bank is, um, my bank account is currently healthy and working and everything is good. So I imagine it will take several minutes to see. And that is possible. And so things that we kind of want to think about too are um, what we call abort conditions over here at Gremlin 2. At what point do we halt our attack when it impacts the customer experience? And what's nice is that you can generally see that directly over. Now, I don't know if it's the snow today or what. Um, we did actually run this attack earlier today and we got some really interesting <laughs> results from it. But yeah. maybe. Maybe the snow is, well, let's just blame it on the snow because that's kind of fun. <laughs> Maybe the um, snow makes everything better. I think it does. And also Kubernetes is rather resilient too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the attack is still running in the background and it looks like you have some questions here. So um, I'm just going to be your little moderator and ask you these questions. Uh, is Commodore able to do slight changes to remediate the detected issues? Um, we're not doing any changes to your uh, application or infrastructure. You have to do it on your own, but we do show you the root cause and we do um, uh, make sure that you understand the root cause really quickly and easily, and you can fix it on your own in a very short time. Excellent. Um why don't we check the Bank of Anthos again real quick and see while this is still running. Yeah, it's still, it's still healthy. It's still working. Everything is working. Maybe we can, we can try it one more time. Yeah, it looks like it was successful. Yeah. Now, one of the things that we see too, though, is that the target container, it's actually configured to be killed if it runs out of memory. So that can actually affect the running of Gremlin as well. So why don't we try something a little bit different here? I am going to shut some things down, Rona, and I'm not going to tell you what. Okay. And let's go ahead and see what happens on your end. Now, just to let you know, because we're having a little bit of fun today, normally, again, we form our hypothesis, but I, and normally we're not trying to catch our folks off guard. So I'm having a little bit of fun. I'm going to shut down um, some of our nodes. So bear with me really quick. So 
I don't want to show everybody what I'm doing, but you can in the Gremlin app, which you can get for free app.gremlin.com uh, for the free trial. I am running a state attack, which is shut down. So we're going to be testing the resilience to host failures. Great. And I actually am rerunning that attack because one of the things that we have in the shutdown attack is a reboot. So that indicates that the host should reboot after shutting down. And I forgot to toggle that off. So one of the great things about Gremlin is there is a great halt button. So you can stop your attack, especially if you are running up against those um, abort conditions. So I halted it and I reran it. And let's see if you can troubleshoot this. Let's see. So let's give that just a minute. You should probably start to see something coming through here very soon. Looks like you have another question. Is Commodore able to track changes that are not only code changes? For example, config slash features. Yeah, we can track uh, config changes and we can track, um, I don't know if I showed you, but. One second. All right, Ronan, I'm starting. Okay. To, are you starting to get any alerts in? No, I just wanted to show that for um, we can show uh, git changes, for example. So we can track down your uh, your repo changes, and you can see for each deploy which uh, git PR was uh, was related to it. So in this case, this was my PR. And we also have a really cool feature of track files. So we track, um, we, um, track important file changes such as YAML file and Docker files, config files. And you can uh, really specify on your own which files are important to you. And when, once you have, um, once you have a change in these files, you'll just see them here in the track file sections. Oh. Here, we got something. Okay, so now you get to figure out what I did. That's a lot of red or pink. Yeah. Red. Yeah. Okay, so I can see here in uh, in the Slack channel that I have a lot of services that became unhealthy, probably because of your attack. Yeah. yeah, so I got a health event of not enough ready replicas, the same as before. It's still not uh, ready. I can see that I have a uh, zero out of one replicas. And I can also see that a lot of services went down, right? So my guess here would be that uh, your shutdown actually shut down my node, one of my node or hosts. Uh, 
that's what I can figure out from this uh, issue. I can see that it all goes back to uh, normal, um, but um, since a lot of services went down, this is my hypothesis regarding your attack. And uh, what I would do in this case is just um, maybe contact my DevOps and see what happened with my nodes. And um, maybe I'm running on some uh, cloud provider and there's an issue with it. Maybe it's AWS East or something. So uh, I don't know, but maybe, uh, but we can see that it all goes back to normal. And maybe we can run the, the previous attack again, right? Absolutely. So you'd like me to run the shutdown attack again? Yeah. Excellent. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to steal it from you really quick so I can show folks what I actually did. So what I did was I went and created a new attack. Now, here's a great feature within Gremlin. I can actually rerun this attack directly from here. You can see the shutdown attack and um, what was going on with that attack. And I killed two out of three of your nodes. So I'm just going to show how we start that attack from the beginning. So I'd hit new attack here. I'd go over to our infrastructure and on our hosts here, I'm gonna pick exact because you can go by tag or you can go exact. Exact is kind of easy because we only have um, three. I'm going to pick these two and I'm gonna choose a gremlin. So I am going to run this shutdown attack. And this, remember how I said we have a reboot button that's automatically toggled on, so I had to start it. I'm gonna turn that off and I'm going to unleash that attack again for everybody. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of safety built in. So if you see a degraded customer experience, you can hit the halt button here, the halt button here. And then we're seeing this attack as it's running through. So the attack is currently in a pending state. And Rona, where you started to see the, the issues was towards the end of the attack. So would you like me to flip this back over to you? Second. Yeah. All right, let me go ahead and do that. There you go. And we did see that that took a moment for that to come over. We're seeing some interesting, interesting things here on the attack. Actually, Rona, I am going to steal it back from you because yeah, I shouldn't have okay. away so yeah. soon. It's okay. So this is what's going on right now. So as we're shutting down those hosts, we can see that we were down to one. We're going to see this eventually, hopefully bottom out here at the end of the attack. So while we're doing this and while everybody's watching the fun here, uh, another question for you, can I integrate my alerts into Commodore? Yes, you can. You can, we have a lot of available integrations at Commodore. That's our actual, actual strength. And you can integrate uh, whatever alerts alerting system you're using with Commodore, you can send your alerts to Commodore. So you have the integrations uh, page here and you can choose whatever alert, alerting tool you're using and send your alerts back to Commodore. And it will all show up nicely um, in, the, in the services and events view. Excellent. Now you can see that we are down to zero healthy hosts. I am guessing that you are probably going to get some alerts now. So I will go ahead and stop my share um, and give it back to you. And while we're flipping that over to you, you have one more question, which can you please explain how Commodore is different than Lens IDE? I don't know what Lens IDE is, but can you explain how it's different? Lens IDE is basically uh, a tool for you for uh, one second. I'm just gonna, I can do it all together. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I can re-ask you that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, 
um, we can see here that uh, we got an alert from, we got, we, we actually got a banner here saying that uh, node and node name is unhealthy. And, uh, and here, okay, it went back, uh, <laughs> went back uh, live again. But once I opened the, the nodes, um, the nodes um, view and the button, I can see here the node status. And one of the nodes, because you made a shutdown uh, attack on one of my nodes or two of my nodes, they were in an unknown state. So a status, so you'll see here that the status will be unknown instead of ready. And Kubelet, it will not be able to post any uh, statuses. So um, that really what appeared here in, uh, at the banner. And now since uh, it all went back to normal, uh, the the nodes are ready again, and I'm expecting the services to go back uh, and be healthy again. So, um, yeah. Oh, and we should have shown what the Bank of Anthos looked like that. I'm wondering if you're going over there, if there'll be any residuals. Yeah. Uh, I can see here, as I said, now uh, I'm expecting my services to go back and uh, to health, uh, to be healthy. And uh, I can see that this indeed what happened. Um, every service here, I get an alert and I see that it recovered. So um, that was what, that what I was expecting it to happen and it did happen. That's excellent. Um, we love that too with chaos engineering is validating that hypothesis. We actually want to validate what the hypothesis is. And then if we find something, it's like, yes, we found something we weren't expecting. <laughs> right. Right. Um, yeah. So I'm thinking maybe we can do the memory attack again and we'll finish off with this one, I think. Excellent. Okay, I will go ahead and run that memory attack and I'll just do it while you can still share your screen. And while I'm setting that up, can you explain how Commodore is different than Lens IDE? Yeah. Uh, again, don't know what Lens IDE is, but how are you different? Thanks for the <laughs> questions, everybody, too. I'm really loving them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so at in Lens IDE, uh, you can see the Kubernetes uh, status, uh, all of the resources status, the pods, the deployments, the, the replicas, etc. Um, and we show it as well at Commodore. But uh, in Lens, in Lens, you don't have any history of the events, and you don't have a way to tell what happened uh, the day before uh, or uh, uh, thirty minutes before, etc. And uh, actually, you don't have any history as well. You don't have a way of integrating um, the the same as we said before of integrating a lot of your, um, a lot of what you're using in your system, a lot of your tools into the same location. You have to go and check everything um, on its own and it's really hard to do. So Commodore just integrates everything into one location. And you also, in Commodore, you get insights and you get context. Um, we give you insight about what's going on in your system. We give you uh, some context about what's going on in your system. That, uh, that is not happening in Lens. It just gives you the Kubernetes resources status at the moment. So that's the difference. Well, thank you. Um, and thanks for the explanation. And uh, that, that memory attack is running. And I'm not seeing anything on your end and I can attack more things as well. Um, yeah, go for it. <laughs> you know, does anybody in I the mean, audience have anything we'd like to attack? I mean, we can- I think it. maybe it just takes some time until um, it happens. 
maybe you can run the memory attack on more uh, resources because I think that everything is working fine now. Let's see. I can see my balance. I can maybe deposit funds. Oh, I'm not authorized to deposit funds. Wow. Yeah. Not authorized so to deposit something funds. Happened. Something so happened. So something happened. Yeah. yeah that, okay. That's really frustrating too. If you're trying to deposit <laughs> funds in your own account and you would get that attack. Right. That, um, that response. This is actually something interesting to point out just for folks when you're looking at those error messages that folks get, are they readable? And I, I do kind of like this because it makes sense to us, but do you think the regular user is going to understand things like servers? So we just want to think about how we are, um, how our error messages are targeted to our customer, not engineers. Something that I think we always need to remember when we're showing those error messages. Um. Well, <clears throat> the attack is running. Oh yeah, something happened. Oh, there it is. It went right at the top of the hour. Is everybody seeing that? Oh, I hope not too many people. Yay. Yay. Let's see. Let's see. Great. Yeah. Well, it all, it all goes back to, okay. But we see that we got an actual out of memory killed issue here. Yay. And we know that in Kubernetes, out of memory killed issue can be caused due to an application issue or due to some underlying infrastructure issue, uh, such as the node having um, um, having uh, an issue, and actually maybe the node just the schedule just decided to um to um to um unschedule my application but it's not related actually to my application it's just related to the node so we can just click here on the view analysis button and see what commodore tells us so we can see here that we do have an out of memory issue. We can see which container container is failed and we can see the memory details for that container. And what Commodore does for us is just running automated checks for us in order to figure out what was the issue and what is the root cause of this out of memory issue. Um, so, um, we just, uh, we, we are running some uh, smart checks, maybe ones that if you get an out of memory killed issue, your DevOps, uh, your senior DevOps will tell you to check. So um, we're checking if there were uh, some spec changes, we're checking uh, if the node is over committed, we're checking the quality of service we're checking if maybe additional services were impacted and we're checking other pods on this service. Maybe it's just this pod that was uh, um, that has an issue or maybe some other pods on this service has an issue. We can learn a lot from this, um, from this checks. And for each check, check that we're running we're explaining to you why are we running this check and what you can learn from it so if you look at the more info button we do uh suggest we do say what are we doing in, in this check and why are we recommending for example to roll back to previous configuration um so uh this actually does tell me a lot about what's going on in my system and what I should do about it. Um, yeah. 
So uh, in this case, maybe I would go and I see that my node is, is over committed. So I would just try to add more nodes to my cluster or maybe increase uh, the memory uh, resources that I have on my nodes. And this can, this can um, solve the issue for me. And if not, I have two more options here to, um, to choose uh, to pay attention to. Um, the other checks, they, they have, we have three um, checks here that were, um, uh, that we discover as uh, maybe are causing the issue. And the other two are, we're saying it's all good. I, um, you don't have any additional services and you don't have any other pods that are failing in the service. Um, yeah, and I think we're running out of time. <laughs> and the thing that I want to say is once you've, once you've done those things, then rerun the attack to make sure now that your your all your remediations work. But yes, we did run out of time. And yeah. this was lots of fun. And I'm glad we got some things to break. Um, I did run this second memory attack for a little bit longer. We attacked a few more things. Um, gosh, Rona, thanks for the time today. It's well, always thank fun. Thank you. Out <laughs> thank you for creating chaos in my uh, application. <laughs> Any time. <laughs>